Hi, in this tutorial we will see an alternative method for the projection of color information from a set of registered images on a 3D model. In another tutorial we already saw uh, the approach based on mass photo blending where essentially um, the color information that is assigned to a single portion of the surface is uh, a weighted sum of the contribution of all the images which project on that particular part of the surface. This time we will see an approach which is a kind of opposite one because for each single uh, portion of the surface only one image is chosen which is the, the, the kind of best one uh, the one with best quality for that particular part of the surface. This approach is extremely good um, because uh, at the same time you can get two important results. The first one is the color projection but you can also have a parameterization of the model because each uh, patch of the surface which is assigned to a single image uh, is a, exactly a patch of the parameterization of the model. So this is extremely good when you have models which are not very detailed in terms of number of triangles for example and uh, it gets very nice result and is able to preserve the color detail because you are uh, projecting directly on the texture map. So uh, this is uh, the typical example we have uh, several images which have been aligned uh, to a 3D model, like you can see uh, here are the images and uh, even the model is not very detailed because it's made of only 200,000 uh, faces and uh, the filter is quite easy to be used, it's inside the filter texture parameterization plus texturing from the registered rasters and there are a few parameters which are important. Uh, the first one is the texture size, which is uh, the size of the textures that will be created. The bigger the texture, the more details and the more disk space. Uh, for this example, we can choose 2048, for example. And you can also choose the name of, of the texture, which will be created on the disk. And another option which I wanted to talk about is the color correct correction. Uh, this is because uh, if you are dealing with the two uh, patches of the surface which are adjacent but they are assigned to different images if the two images are really different one to the other for example they have different illumination you will be able to see the the change uh, in the border between the two, the, the two patches uh, this color cor correction option uh, tries to blend the difference between the images in the, the, the portion of the surface which are near to this border and uh, it makes the kind of uh, similar thing to the blending made by the mass photo blending approach but only on the border surface so that you will have a very continuous color so I suggest to keep uh, always this option on. There are two other options which are important like use, is, use distance weight and use image border weight. This uh, I suggest to choose always uh, those two um, because they are two additional criteria to choose which is the best image for each portion of the surface in addition to the uh, default one which is the uh, orthogonality of the direction of view and if you uh, add these two options you will have a bit more fragmented, fragmented parameterization uh, of the object but the quality of the color will be much better so use them uh, so once that you set all these uh, options, you just launch, for, launch the filter and you wait. Um, this filter uses uh, the GPU quite a lot, so it uses shaders. It's usually quite fast, it's uh, already finished. And uh, when it's finished, essentially you don't see anything about the, the final result. But for example, uh, if you choose uh, render show UV text param, which is a way to visualize a, uh, the texture of a model, you see that uh, a texture has been created, and these are the portions of the surfaces which have been mapped in the context of the of the texture. Um, I can also open the texture that has been created. So this is an image which has been saved already in, on the disk, and it has been uh, also assigned to the model. So the model is already. Uh, a model with color and texture parameterization but uh, you need to save it to, 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 
be able to open it in a second time so I save the model and you see that automatically you have the texture coordinates and the name of the texture which is saved okay. so if I close the project and reopen the model that I already saved you see here that I have a texture model okay. uh, the texture of this model is really very good you can see that the, the quality of the detail is really impressive because it's, uh, it's essentially the same detail of the original images so this is very good and uh, this is an advantage uh, with respect to the mass photo blending where the, the risk where the risk is to lose the the, the, the fine details due to the blending approach uh, but uh, I, so this is a, an extremely good filter you can get extremely nice the results but are there are two things that I have to say. The first one is that uh, this uh, uh, method is perfect when you have a quite small project. So when you have uh, like uh, not more than nine, ten images and the model which is not very resoluted and that works really well and you get the incredibly good results. Um, the, um, in the case when you have more than ten images it could be a bit risky because the more images you have the more fragmented the parameterization will be and uh, we will uh, you, you can get not so good results and moreover another risk with this method is that uh, if the images are very different one respect to the other uh, then the color correction options could be uh, not able to uh, mask the differences uh, between the patches uh, of the texture and so if uh, some images are very dark in some portions or very light with respect to the others you can see quite strongly visible artifacts which are not as visible uh, which are not so visible when you use the mass photo blending approach so you have to choose which is the best approach for you and um, my suggestion is that when you have a set of images to be projected on the model you should try all the, the filters that you have in MeshLab and then choose the one which gives the best result. One final thing about this uh, uh, filter is that uh, this filter, like um, some of the new filters of the last release, is making quite mass massive use of the GPU and of shaders. So it will be very fast, but if you don't have a GPU which is very powerful, it could be that you, can, you are not able to get the, to the best result and uh, you can get the uh, wrong result uh, without any uh, warning by MeshLab so in this case for example you could get a uh, texture where you have portion of the texture which is black and this is usually because you didn't have any uh, enough uh, uh, graphic memory to complete the operation uh, one way to overcome this uh, in addition to the one of uh, moving to a more powerful uh, machine uh, is to reduce the resolution of the original images or of the, the model then maybe you will be able to complete the filter uh, successfully uh, so please feel free to try this filter it's extremely powerful for very small object and it's probably the best solution uh, for most of the cases you have to deal with and uh, thanks a lot